Hey everybody, welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412. Hope you had a wonderful week as we head into the weekend here. Just going to be looking at this five game early slate on DraftKings. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what FanDuel does. I don't play there uh, personally. I know Meg Ruler does, one of our other coaches, as well as Matt Manoa. Um, but if, you, if you're looking for some of that, you know, drop some comments down uh, below and we can try to get those answered for you. I really like this slate. I think it's pretty straightforward um, in terms of where things shake out. I like the GPP side of things as well in tournaments and upside. Um, so we're going to break that down. We're going to go through our rankings. And then I got some example builds uh, preset already for you uh, that I, I think could be a way you could go uh, in terms of your lineups in both cash and in tournaments. So uh, let's just kind of start off with our pitchers as we always do. And again, these are just uh, like salary tiers. So we have like our high salary, mid salary, uh, and so on. Only two really expensive pitchers so far um, or on this slate in Sonny Gray and Irvin Cabrera. Gray and Cabrera have looked phenomenal uh, to start the season, both of them. Gray definitely gets a leg up on Cabrera, though, in terms of control. 23 strikeouts to just one walk uh, so far this season and three games start. It's impressive. It is seriously impressive. The Mets, they are doing better uh, as the season progresses here. Uh, but honestly, like when you're comparing Gray and Cabrera, their opponents, Washington and the Mets, they have very, very similar strikeout rates in their lineups against right-handed pitching, and they also have near-identical WRC pluses uh, as well as a team. So not too much separating the two of them, so I am going to give the edge towards Gray, uh, just because Cabrera does have a little bit more of a control issue. It's not a lot. It's a little bit, um, but I'm going to be really picky here. Uh, and honestly, if you want to jam both of them into your lineup, I could totally understand that. Uh, but I do really like Parker here for Washington. Um, he's looked phenomenal. He's only had two major league starts so far, uh, but they were against the Dodgers and he shut them down and they were against the Astros and shut them down. The Astros, they're really struggling this season, uh, but still, it's very impressive. They're a low strikeout team, and now he's facing off against Miami, the worst team in all of baseball uh, against left-handed pitching, and so this is going to be like a dream matchup for Parker, and I could see a Gray-Parker or a Cabrera-Parker uh, combination in cash games being quite popular. The other two pitchers in that price range are going to be Green and Lorenzen facing off against one another. Very similar uh, pitchers in terms of like they have higher strikeout upside, but they also have a little more control issues. Uh, we'll put it that way. They can walk guys, uh, get hit with the, the long ball um, as well. So I do put a slight edge on Lorenzen over Green, just being at home. Um, and oh, the other big thing of why I put Lorenzen over Green, Cincinnati second highest strikeout rate in the league against right-handed pitching so far this season. Texas, second lowest strikeout rate against right-handed pitching. So a big boost uh, for Lorenzen on that. Texas, they're a favorite. It's a slight favorite, but they're a favorite. Uh, so I'm going to be putting him over green. After that, it gets really dicey in terms of the pitching. I didn't even want to put a guy in this top spot because, uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty bleak here. Uh, you got Irvin and Sears both facing off against each other in that Baltimore-Oakland matchup. Am I excited about either of them? No. Uh, like, I probably won't even get to them unless I'm building 20 lineups on this slate, which... I'm not. Like, I'm just going to say no, I'm not. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be keeping my uh, ownership up here because salary is not going to be too much of an issue. Um, like, the, the higher bats are, are just not that expensive. Um, and there's going to be a lot of value on the slate as well. So I'm going to be sticking up here personally. I don't know who the Chicago starting pitcher is at this point in time as I record this the night before. Uh, DK has it as Brown. I, I can't guarantee that it is going to be him. Um, MLB.com doesn't have anybody still to be determined. And in my years of doing this, MLB.com is far more trusting than uh, DK at this time of night, the night prior uh, to the slate. So looking at uh, some builds here. We're talking about or talking about the bats, and then we'll get into the builds. Um, Cubs, they're gonna be my favorite uh, stack target, uh, whatever you want to call it, on the day facing off against Winkowski. Uh, one thing I really like about Chicago is that they're extremely affordable. Um, and you know, I'll just go over to the builds. 
we'll, we'll just do it so I can talk about it. Um, but Gray and Cabrera, you know, figure out one of those two guys and then Parker. I feel like that's going to be a pretty popular combination in terms of cash. Uh, after that, I really do like targeting Chicago bats. Bush, Hap, and Talkman are going to be the three guys I'm going to be targeting the most. Um, they're, they're all just fantastic against excuse me, they're all fantastic, have the best numbers against right-handed pitching so far this season for Chicago, and they're also very, very... Nope, okay, I thought I was going to sneeze. Uh, they're also very affordable, sorry about that, um, and, and are going to allow you to get those higher-priced uh, pitchers. After that, I'm going to be going with St. Louis, and like it, it pains me to be playing St. Louis and and viewing them as like a higher tier offense uh, just because they have been just so disappointing this season. But Hauser has been horrendous. Let's take a look at Hauser's numbers uh, so far this season. Um, 7.45 ERA, 0-2. He's got more walks than he has strikeouts. So it's a it's been an absolute disaster uh, for him at this stage of, of his career. So going to be interested in St. Louis. I'm going to be going with Contreras. He's going to be the top bat for sure. Uh, after that, you might want to go with Wynn, uh, who's going to provide you a little bit more of salary savings. Now, if you do go with this, you're looking at around 4.1K remaining for the remaining spots in the second, third, and the outfield. So not too much of an issue at all in, in terms of salary. Um, honestly, if you want to go Cabrera and Gray, uh, your, your average salary remaining is going to probably be going down closer down to like 3.6. Uh, but still, very affordable, very possible uh, for you to go in that direction. In terms of GPP, uh, I feel like Texas is probably going to be my favorite uh, GPP target. Uh, pairing them with Cincinnati, like you could do a game stack, I guess, if you want to go that route. Um, both of these offenses are facing off against pitchers who have higher upside, uh, but they also have very low floors and can get uh, shelled and blown up a little bit at times. So I think that Texas is still going to be my favorite uh, GPP tournament stack in terms of upside and everything uh, going off against green. I put Lorenzen in as pitcher just because if you really think that Texas is going to go off, they're going to do very well. You know, maybe Lorenzen is going to be in line for the win. And I already talked about how Cincinnati, they have the second highest strikeout rate so far against right-handed pitching throughout the course of this season. So I really do like him in that spot. Following that, Lowe, Smith, Seeger, and uh, Adoles Garcia. Those are going to be the four bats that I would be targeting for Texas right in the heart of the order or right in the heart of the lineup uh, for them. Or they have the best numbers for Texas uh, against right-handed pitching. And then we're going to go with a nice Willier Abreu uh, value play for Boston. And I think that Boston might be some of my favorite cheap bats um, on this slate. They don't, they got injuries to some of their top guys. Uh, pull it up here. So uh, just super, super affordable. 5-3, uh, 5-1, And then after those three guys, you're looking at 3-7, uh, and below. So they're going to be super cheap, super affordable. Again, I'm not sure exactly who the Cubs pitcher is going to be, so pay attention to that. It could just be a bullpen game uh, for Chicago. But regardless, I do think that Boston, very affordable. Uh, and it could be a nice pairing with Texas there as a minor stack. Uh, that kind of rounds everything out. I, I do, again, have interest in Baltimore. It really burned me in that last video. Uh, but I think that they're going to be uh, being able to bounce back here uh, against a guy like Irvin. So this is where things shake out. Hopefully this was helpful in guiding you in the right direction. These are not the core plays that, you know, uh, we're going to be guaranteed to be providing on the slate in our Discord. Come join us. Link down in the description below. Uh, but hopefully this is kind of a guide as to where we might be heading uh, in that in that sleep. So thanks for watching. As always, no video tomorrow. We will be back on Monday uh, where we can break down uh, another slate for you. So good luck in all of your contests and all of the sports. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.